It's another Engine Masters intake manifold shootout, this time for the big block Chevrolet with oval ports. This is gonna be sort of a real average cruising type of 454, where the dual plane manifolds that are more oriented towards the street will be like perfectly fit for this engine. I'm gonna tell you about all the manifolds. First, let me just run through what this engine is. It is a 454 bottom end, and it would be similar to something that you would have pulled out of like a 94 Chevy truck or something like that. It has very low compression. It has GM Performance Parts heads, which are Roval ports. Remember that the big block Chevy from the factory had basically three ports. There was the peanut port, which was oval and tiny. There's the large oval port, which is much larger and oval. And then there's the rectangle port. Then Edelbrock made something that we call a Roval, which is sort of a rectangle with very rounded edges. So that's the engine. It's only gonna make like 450 horsepower. Next, the manifolds. I went shopping and was surprised to discover there really aren't that many options, especially if you want a high rise for more power than average. Let's go over what we've got. First, there's the Edelbrock RPM air gap. As you know, this is the manifold we recommend for virtually everything that runs under 6,500 RPM on the street. Sort of our standard. By the way, this example the RPM air gap is coated black. This one that's on the engine is actually the one we're gonna test. It's not gonna make a difference in power. Next, there's the Speedmaster intake. And I will tell you that to the naked eye, everything about the inside ports on this thing is identical to the Edelbrock RPM air gap. There's some differences on the outside, but I would expect these manifolds to perform the same. Let's get into the much lower rise intakes. First, the Edelbrock Performer 2 oval port. This one is the lowest height. It's also got the smallest ports of any of them, and I believe it's the oldest design of any of them. Moving up in height, we've got the Wyand Street Warrior, and then the Summit Racing intake, which is taller than either the Performer or the Street Warrior. And I mentioned that just because hood clearance might be an issue for you. A Corvette, of like a Stingray, is a perfect application where you probably need a lower intake if you want to run a conventional stock hood. Also, for your information, the two Edelbrock manifolds are designed and cast and machined in the United States, and all the others are Chinese. His dog. <laughs> I could hear that thing barking from here. That is a dog. We're testing a bunch of intake manifolds on our 454 big block Chevy, and the very first one here is the Speedmaster, and it made 537.8 pound-feet of torque at 3,600 RPM and 465 horsepower at 6,000 RPM. The first thing we noticed is the massive spread, 2,400 RPM between peak torque and peak horsepower. Why? That's actually a really good thing. Well, um, it could I guess, be. yeah. Well, I mean, it's making peak horsepower at 6,000, but it's not making a lot of horsepower at 6,000 now, is it? It doesn't make a lot of horsepower because it doesn't make a lot of torque either. And that's, in my opinion, because it's eight to one compression, a typical 454 with 10 to one compression would be in the 565 to 575 range as far as torque. This is down at 537. The horsepower seems kind of low for that tall of a RPM peak. It's kind of one horsepower per cubic inch. I guess so. It's eight to one. It is what it is, I guess. Yeah, it doesn't mean that we can't compare the different intake manifolds, in my opinion. Continuing with our 454 intake manifold shootout, we've tested the Speedmaster, and now we're going to the Edelbrock Performer 2.0 for oval port. Remember I was pointing out that manifolds don't always bolt right up? Check this out. The end rails are touching the engine block right here. That means even if I put some silicone in there, it's gonna leak because see how the manifold just walks around like that? So on this particular intake, and this might not be true on your engine, by the way, it's just on this combo, we are going to have to stack gaskets. 
So the intake gaskets will be 120,000 thick, which you can actually buy in the aftermarket. You don't have to stack them, but that's what we're gonna do. Steve, do you mind gluing them in place? The next manifold that we tested is the Edelbrock Performer 2 oval port, and this is the intake that's designed for peanut port heads, and we think that's reflected in the power numbers here. The horsepower was 436.2 at 6,000 RPM, and the torque 532.5. So that's a big nosedive in horsepower versus the first intake, but surprisingly, the torque is the same, 532 versus 537. Yeah, it's visibly a lot smaller intake manifold as far as cross-section and stuff. And, and I, lower you know, and everything else. Yeah, all of it. I mean, I think it's designed more for truck general purpose kind of applications, not so much for what we're trying to do. Let's show exactly how much you don't want to choose that <laughs> for, you know, a roval port head or a big oval port. Or this. Yeah. Oh. Mm, that's so, a big drop. The red lines are the big high-rise intake with the larger ports in it, and the black lines are the low-rise performer with peanut ports, and you can see the penalty you pay. It's just, it's the wrong manifold for the cylinder head. Yeah, for, for this application at wide open throttle, it's just not the correct choice. Yeah, it's just, it's not moving air. That's yeah, the problem. Yeah, it diverges, it kind of says that, shows it. But then again, it's 436 horsepower. <laughs> I think it must have been designed on like a 396 or a 402. Actually, peanut ports didn't even come out until no. it was a 454. No, right. and when you think about the truck applications, you're talking more they, like 330 horsepower, not well, even into the 400. Remember, they made 290 from yeah, the factory. That's what probably they were designed for. Yeah. When the goop is still wet. You can do that by hand. There's no reason to scrape when we've got perfection right perfection. there. Perfection. All right, 16th, Steve. Here comes the Edelbrock air gap. the peak power numbers for the Edelbrock RPM. The horsepower, 469.9 at 6,000. The torque, 540.3 at 3,500, which appears to be just a speck better than the Speedmaster. What a surprise, an Edelbrock Performer RPM air gap doing well. Once it, again. It wins every <laughs> single time. Let's look at the overlay to see if that's actually a true fact. The one that looks identical, all right, the black lines here are the air gap and the red lines are the Speedmaster and you can see that the Edelbrock is just a speck better. Yeah. And made in America.